A lot of you may be thinking right now, oh my god, today's the day, it's finally happening, and then a lot of you guys also might be saying, what is happening? I didn't know you had a 350Z, or let alone an LS swapped one, where has it been? Well, to make a long story short, I don't know if I could do that very well, about two and a half years ago, I used to be pretty into drifting, for a variety of reasons I just quit it. The 350Z was my purpose-built drift car. After having some complications with the V6 that came in the car, uh, I had a shop fully build a 6.2 LS, put it in the car, and unfortunately, something happened during the build process that wasn't correct. It, like, Spun a bearing. There's a million reasons. I mean, there's so much I could tell you guys. There's a million reasons why I haven't taken my Z back. I let somebody borrow my transmission and a bunch of swap components, and uh, he he needed them. He had an LS car and he needed a trans. I had plenty of other cars. This guy needed to get to work, so I was like, yeah, you can borrow my transmission and some stuff. I have so much going on that it really didn't bother me that I didn't have my Z. But today I'm going to Trackstar because of a couple things. The wide body AMG that I'm doing. I sold the prior design front bumper and the wing. Dropping that off, I'm meeting the person at Trackstar, and I'm also killing two birds with one stone here. A little bit of Nissan day. I'm giving Ethan the last of the head components for my RB25, so that car will finally be able to come back. I'm actually kind of behind, and uh, I could just talk for days about the Z, and we'll probably talk about it a little bit more later, but, ooh, I do have to, oh, I have to load up wheels and tires because I sold the ones that are on there. Oh, crap, okay, okay, okay. I got a lot to do. I gotta load this stuff up because um, I'm already running behind. But I got the winch ready. Got the trailer ready. It's time to get the Z back. All right, bumper, wing, RB head components, extra wheels and tires, load it up. Let's go. <laughs> so I ended up having to go a interesting situation. The guy who bought the bumper, he lives like in El Paso, and his mom, she tried to pick it up in an like a old Sentra. I just went ahead and drove to her house and dropped it off, but uh, I was able to give Ethan RB stuff. So I guess let's just see what's going on in there. Oh, hello. Hello, Z. We're taking you home. And there it is. Did he finish it? Is it done? No. Oh. I have the one, I have the one to do. <laughs> okay. Do it right now. So I dropped this off a little bit ago. This is the head for the RB. It's built and ready to make some power. We're gonna finally be doing some Nissan things here pretty soon. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I used to have the uh, lime green wheels on this. I ended up selling them. Uh, somebody really wanted them, but I got like FDF on this thing. I am actually a little excited to get this back. This car was actually pretty mint condition. I wrecked it and fixed it a few times, so it's got a lot of you know things that need fixed on it, but uh, let's go ahead and get some wheels on this thing and get her out of here. I'm gonna so play this off on Twitter as saying like, I picked up another abandoned car. It's because I abandoned it this time. A car that I abandoned. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> okay, that went off when I was street drifting and uh, well, the left foot braking didn't work and caused me to have some fun. Where's my sump? It's not in here. Some exhaust goodies. I'm gonna have to make a new exhaust. Got the adapter plate. Sheesh, dude. Dude, I haven't seen this car in so long, bro. Oh, God. Well guys, here is the engine. This actually got rebuilt some time ago and things just happened and I couldn't get the engine back in. I think we actually, right before Ethan, the Rona hit, we actually had it in the shop ready to go and then we had like the mandate to stay home and I, like I, you know, I couldn't come to the shop and what can you do? This is a built 6.2, it's built by ATK. Hopefully we have a little bit better luck this time. It was uh, kind of a crap show and very unfortunate. So we're gonna get this in the truck. Ethan is finishing up the RB head. Actually, I can maybe show what he's doing. Yeah, I'd like to, yeah. First of all, you gotta have this tool, but. I was gonna say, you have to <laughs> you have, this, have tool. this tool. You gotta have this tool, yeah. But, um, so right now I've got the spring in and I'm gonna put this towel under here to make sure that that valve stays yeah. up. Okay, and now I've got the retainer and the keepers. So what I like to do is, now those are into the retainer. I'm gonna take a little piece of electrical tape. Yeah, I'm gonna cover over the top of it. These little these little retainers will pop out super easily when you press them in. Yeah, and some people would 
compress it and then try to sneak the uh, retainers we in. Did, or the, we the tried keepers, that. Rather. It's very hard. It's, it's, it's very hard. hard. Yeah, so I do it like this, and maybe it'll go perfectly right now on uh, on camera. Maybe it, it won't, but. So we have like the hand clamp of that in my shop, and it does not work. First try, okay, first so try, I'm resting on it, and let's see. I can feel the, the keepers popping up. I feel, I think I've, oh, oh no, it didn't go. <laughs> oh yeah, it's in there. Nice. Oh. You did do it first That's try. it. All yeah. right, and that's it. I was waiting for this little seat and uh, keeper for like, you know, a month or so. <laughs> Literally everything else has been done. I installed so. everything that I could. Yep. <laughs> this, is, this is on him. And we are now done. This can now go back in the RV. We can get that car running again. Gonna do some Nissan things. All the running cars would be great. Yes. Know, yeah. Engine it this way. Okay. Okay. Hey. Here we go, boys. A little shocked right now, we just got this in here. Let's go, boys. Ah, I always miss Ethan having a funny struggle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wide god dang that boy wide absolutely insane guys we've got the z loaded up we've got the ls loaded up let's go ahead and get home funny thing is drew has no idea i'm taking this home today so hopefully it doesn't overwhelm him <laughs> drew has no idea i don't think he's gonna be like why oh she's home Nope, this car has not been to this house yet. Hasn't been to a house for a long time. Drew has not, I didn't even tell Drew. No. Hey, Drew, I got a special delivery. Cool. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> Another big shout out to HTP Welders. So much good stuff going on. I got a big update for you guys for the Civic and we'll come back to that soon. It's gonna be really, Cool. Also, I guess, speaking of uh, Civic, um, you guys might know what this engine is. Got a lot of things happening right now that you guys just don't know about. Well, I guess now that you know about. I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit about, I mean, if you guys have missed what the story behind this car is or was or whatever, it's got a lot to it, honestly. Uh, this was a very interesting car. So I bought this to get a little more seat time. Basically, I rushed too quickly into my SC300 and made it too fast. And I actually didn't like it at four something 500 horsepower. And so I wanted a seat time car. And so I bought this car. When we bought it, the engine was uh, blown. <laughs> Oil pump was bad. So we actually reassembled this car, uh, rebuilt it. And then it had some more issues. Like it kept pulling timing and the fuel pump was bad. And so I had a couple drift days with this thing probably making 150, 200 horsepower, and I just said, screw it, I'm done with the VEQ, like this motor sucks, it was a DE, so ended up pulling that and going with a 6.2 LS, because we know we love to make bad decisions and do things that we think is cool on the internet. We paired up with ATK to get a 6.2 built heads, uh, built bottom end, everything uh, for this car. We spent like, I mean, all of us spent two weeks straight at least uh, getting this engine into the car and getting ready for a pretty cool event that was down in Houston. And unfortunately, just because of how quickly we had to go about all this, there's a lot of things that were just like wrong with the car itself. Um, the tuning wasn't there. I mean, the brakes didn't work the entire event. It was just, it was a lot. Um, my diff started shaking because I didn't have a good diff brace. And so I was a little bummed out after that. And then after that event, we went to the dyno and lo and behold, at like, like 270 wheel or 300 wheel uh, bearing had spun or something like this, something along those lines. Something very, very odd and um, unsure, still unsure why to this day the builder was like, I don't know how. Of course, Ethan and I don't know how because we just put the engine in and everything was right. So th I got this back about six months later. And so this is the same build, still a six to, oh, actually, hold on. I'm actually not even explaining to you guys the most important part of the story. I didn't have a transmission. <laughs> 
this whole time. So about the transmission, a lot of you guys, uh, I have kind of said this, I never wanted uh, the guy who I had let borrow the transmission to, I didn't want him to look bad because he's a really nice kid. At the time we were doing all this, there's a kid at the shop with another LS swapped Z and it was his only car. He kept on having some problems with the Z. His trans like blew up or something like that. And uh, because this car was down, this was after I think the car had already blown up and it was on jack stair, the engine had blown. It's already on jack stands. And so he was like, hey man, um, I need to get to work. Is it okay if I borrow your transmission for a short little while? I was like, okay, that's fine. Like I have plenty of other cars. I have plenty of other projects. I'm a nice guy. I don't really care. It's fine. Nothing against him. He just ended up using it a lot longer than he should have. But then this really wasn't his fault. He brought his car to another shop. They basically like held his car hostage at this new shop and um, made him pay a buttload of money and not do anything. And long story short, this kid had my transmission for like a year and a half. And I'm not gonna go buy a brand new CD09 because I have one, like I already own one, I don't need another one. And so I just waited for him. About a month or two ago, he finally actually came by and was like, yeah, I'm so sorry it took so long. I, I knew he was a nice kid. Like everybody was like, dude, you should like sue him or you should like put him on blast. And like, dude, you guys need to chill with that kind of crap. They got, they got other stuff to do and I understand that. So he finally made it happen. We have the transmission. This is my CD09 that came in the car. We got the adapter plates. Anyways, on to the next part of this, even though he still had my transition transmission, this was two years ago, right when the Rona started, right? I actually was at Trackstar. In fact, I might still have the picture. We were about to put this engine back in the Z. We were literally there for it. And unbeknownst to me, because he took my transmission, he also took basically all of my swap parts I didn't know about. Um, so I was a little upset about that and my intake manifold and everything. So he literally took everything. So I only had an engine. I didn't have any of my bolts. So we did a nut and bolt check and I ordered all of the swap, uh, just the hardware. I ordered all the hardware for the swap. Well then, or no, what was it? Oh, then he needed some other stuff. He basically took all my hardware for the swap. I don't really remember how it goes. It might still be floating around Ethan's shop, but I don't, I now don't have the hardware for like a third time. So I got to order the hardware again to get this thing in the Z. But we finally have everything at my house. It's not sitting outside anymore. This car has been totaled through hail damage, but it's fine because uh, all of this is super easily replaceable and body workable. I would really like to make something really fun out of this car. I'm maybe not drifting because I'm honestly not particularly involved in that scene anymore. And to be honest, I kind of just got bored of it. Even though I started getting pretty decent at it, I wasn't really into the scene. So I don't know, this car could just be a really fantastic like zero type thing. <laughs> Drew could make a turbo kit for it. He's nodding his head over there, yes. <laughs> uh, maybe a drag car, I don't know, something just a burnout car, something for my Aussie boys over there. Make something absolutely just nuts. So that was actually a very long story very short, believe it or not. That's actually what happened with this car. As I still own it, obviously, this has been my car. It is my car, and I've been wanting to kind of get back to it, but I obviously have so many other things going on. And actually, so much to the point where I'm probably not even going to film much more of the Supra stuff until it runs. The engine's ready to go in, but I've kind of been like saving it for a video, but like I don't even know if I want to do that now because I also have to do a bunch of stuff to my Mercedes. We've got Civic stuff going on. Drew's been making an exhaust manifold for my Evo. My RB actually is now ready, so the the skyline can finally run. Makes me almost cry thinking about that. And, um, you know, and so on. I also just got that GC8 Subaru. I have the other STI I need to do a big turbo on. Now you might know why I just didn't want to take my Z back because I didn't need it. Do I really need it right now? No, but they actually wanted me to, to get it out of their hair. And I have a little bit of space left, kind of, not really. It also is just like a super, this car was kind of a super, Bummer. After all of the effort, because I mean, Ethan put so much time and effort into this, and even pretty Drew, you were yeah, you were there. That's how I met. That's how I met you initially. Like everybody was there helping every day. He came after work to help. Like we were there from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. almost every day. And then like after all that, all this crap happening, and it's just a kind of a crap show. So I wanted to focus on like civic stuff at that time, just kind of leave this alone because like it was a bummer for me because I invested so much of my own money into this, and it just like. Everything just came back and kicked me in the face. I know a lot of you guys, especially Twitter, you guys have been really, really been wanting me to get this car back. So it's back. I'm gonna probably have Drew, after he's done doing his other million things <laughs> over there, try and get this thing running. And I don't know what all content I'm gonna make of it being swapped in. You guys don't really need to see that again because you, you know we already did that. So now every car that I own that is in the USA is at my house and that's crazy. And it's very packed in here. I could maybe fit one more car right here next to the Evo if I cleaned it up a little more, but whoo, I'm thinking I either need to thin the fleet 
which I probably need to, but I don't know what I would do. I don't know how I would do it. I'm ready for those noises again. I am ready. Guys, I hope you have an amazing new year. Whether you have a resolution or not, just try and be the best you can every day this year or starting from today, not even not even New Year's. My advice for you guys today is um, with this whole 350Z thing, sometimes whether it's into a person or into a business or into anything, a lot of times in life you will invest a lot of time, money, energy, or all three. And sometimes things just won't work out. Things don't always go to plan. And so the more you can roll with those punches and live life without things going your way, the more successful you will be. Pretty much every successful person ever has learned how to turn their problems into opportunities. For me, like it really was in my best interest to go ahead and just ditch the Z and continue what I was doing. Because of the Z, I ended up starting civic content and that actually took my channel to another level. Sometimes the discouragement is actually the best building block for you. So if you don't feel like there's enough equity in your life for what you're doing based on what you're getting, don't worry. You just gotta keep going. Roll with the punches and keep at it. Don't let whatever it is that sucks stop you. You guys have an amazing day. Have an amazing celebration of the new year. I love you guys and I'll see you guys in the new year. I've got a lot to do. We'll start it off right. Peace, you guys have an amazing day. Hey, I got two videos for you guys to watch. I say that every day. You guys get tired of hearing that? I hope I hope you just watch the videos so you don't have to listen to me say this whole outro because it's always goofy. I want to kiss my IS300. It looks so good. Oh, I didn't turn the camera off yet.